Hey guys, what's up? It's Evan Ross Katz. I'm senior style editor at Mike. I'm joined by a vision in yellow. You loved her on season six and you loved her on All Stars 3. RuPaul's Drag Race contestant, Benda La Creme. Oh, Thank Scott. you so Thank much you. for Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. Yes. How are you feeling today? What Describe the energy of being in this room full of so much love and support. Oh, it's fully manic. It's absolutely insane. Um, it, it's so normal for me. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's really, it's incredible to be, it's my first drag con. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. Isn't that bonkers? Yeah. Bananas. Um, it's, it's a color reference. Um, no, I, uh, uh, I've never been before, and I think the most incredible part of it is seeing all the kids. Yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I talk about this all the time with Drag Race. It's like, it's what I wished I had got to see when I was yes. that age. Yeah. And so it's amazing to get to like, hug these 10 year olds and their families or, I mean, yeah. it's, it's awesome. And not only that, but also having the idea that a 10 year old can see another 10 year old here. That's the other thing to me that I think is yes. so major about this. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that recognition that there's, you know, and I think that no matter what happens with our um, <laughs> insane political climate, it's like this won't go away. Like yes. people are going to have this experience Forever, those ten-year-olds are going to know that the other ones are out there right, when they're firm. fifty. You know, absolutely. So you're on this little show called RuPaul's Drag Race Once Upon a Time. <laughs> that old thing. Can you talk about how the show changed your career? What drag was like for you before the show, and then after the show? Let's we'll get into All Stars Three, but I'm talking stri strictly season six. How sure. it changed your life? I'd say that uh, in terms of what I'm doing, it remained fairly similar in terms of you know my aspirations and my style, but it just skyrocketed it. Yeah. You know, um, so I was already doing a lot of writing and a lot of theater, but since uh, season six, I've had the opportunity to like, you know, tour three one woman shows, you know, around the world and- Just um, a little thing. I mean, it's been amazing, you know? I mean, cause that's what I, that's what I've always dreamed of. I mean, I was like a, you know, when I was that weird, you know, 10 year old kid, I was like making up stories and forcing my cousins to like act in them. And now I like do that as an adult for a living. Yeah. <laughs> then you came back for All Stars 3. You made quite a splash on the show, as you and I, I mean, maybe, as you and I know. Um, can you talk about how that stratosphere of attention, because clearly the show has evolved so much between season six and All Stars 3, sort of how that stratospheric popularity and the mainstreaming of drag race within our culture, how that level of fame changed things for you? Yeah, you know, it's fascinating because it really, it amped it all up, but I would say in some ways that, um, it's like my tolerance was higher after season six. So um, while things have gotten even more breakneck, it's 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 like I was ready for it. I had like three years of training after season six yes. to get into um, what's happened since All Stars. So it's really just bumped it up. I've gotten to um, you know once again, it's like that extra thrust of like you know I'm touring my solo show in like the UK and Australia this summer, and um, but I still uh, you know I have the. It's, it's just, again, it's that opportunity to harness creatively what you're most passionate about, and it just gives you this bigger and bigger platform. But it's, it's super inspiring to see now the wider range of people who come to shows. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would say that like after season six, you know, I went from performing to predominantly um, like a sort of niche gay audience to uh, of course a lot of uh, like a wide range of queer people but then there were a lot of like straight women who got really into drag and now it's like straight couples it's like people want to introduce wow. me to their boyfriend and I'm like oh it's it's straight date night at, yeah. at the Ben La Creme show great I'll take it <laughs> let's talk about the business of drag for a second yeah, yeah. you know you mentioned your shows where you're making money off of those sorry about Aja I can't apologize her about her before this moment but I can apologize for this one hi hi <laughs> you're beautiful, you're wonderful. I don't remember the rest of your quote. Do you have panties on? No. Do you? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a pizza party later. Oh my god, okay. So there's sprung up this business of drag, whether it be performing in live shows, whether it be albums, whether it be merchandise. Can yeah. you sort of talk about how you've turned your drag into a monetizable career? Yeah, I mean, as I said, I feel like my path is a little different from the other queens, because um, a lot of them do get into like sort of new types of work, like branching out into albums and, and you know, but my sort of passion has always been live theater. And so it's really, it's just that the scale has, yeah. has amped up, you know, like now I, you know, I, I wrote and directed my first play last year and, um, 
and we're doing another run of it this year, 30 shows, you know, and it's uh, over the course of October, and it's just, you know, and like the things that I'm, it's, it's just, um, it's just volume, yeah. you know? And I love the intimacy of a live audience. You know, I like, I really like that energy, but it's just like, you get people in the door because of Drag Race, and then they're like, oh, I like this thing, I'm coming back, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because post-Drag Race, is like your job to get them to return, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I want to talk for a minute about coming out. You know, as LGBTQ people, we are accustomed to coming out, whether it be family and friends, or if you're someone like yourself, coming out publicly, as we expect so many of our celebrities to do. I also wonder if there's a similar coming out as a drag queen. Can you talk about your experience of coming out, whether it be to your family or friends, and saying, I am Benedict Creme? Yeah, you know, interestingly enough, I was one of those kids who never really had a coming out option because everybody knew before I did. Um, and not just about being gay, but, um, but I mean, I was... Uh, I mean, I was like a don't steal kids, but I was like, I would like go to Walgreens and like, um, you know, like pocket things because I would go home and I would like paint my face in the mirror. Like I was just obsessed with it, you know, wrap bath towels around. I mean, like as a kid. And so I thought I was fooling everybody by liking myself in the bathroom and doing it. But of course I'm coming out with a smudged eyeliner. My dad's like drag queen. But um, so it was really, I mean, I was very fortunate to have a very um, supportive family. Um, and the community I was in, it was a small town and that was really rough. But um, I think it was those little glimmers of light uh, on the horizon uh, by people who were speaking out. I mean, like Ellen DeGeneres coming out. I mean, that was huge for me, you know? Um, it, it really, it's like speaking out and talking about any issue, whether it being queer, it's the more vocal we are, the more we can help others and that helps ourselves. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I feel like it's really important to talk about issues like mental health yes. and that kind of stuff because it just destigmatizes it, yes. you know? On that note, I want to end by talking really quickly about you on social media. I feel like you've been using your platform more and more of late to speak out about these issues. Yeah. It's something you always had done, but there's particular moments of late that I can think of. Um, what has it been like for you in addressing the fandom so specifically, and what's the feedback you've received, and what's been your overall takeaway? Because people had a lot of opinions. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been it's been amazing. I mean. You know, obviously I made some bold choices did on you? All Stars 3. <laughs> and, um, and you know, when I, I did that, I was just like, I don't know, this feels like true and right to me. And I just feel like in a space of comfort after being in front of a camera for a few years and being really in the public eye, that I can kind of do and say what I really feel like is important to me. And, but I wasn't sure how it would hit. You know, I wasn't sure what people would think, but. Um, Apparently it was like a big deal. Oh my God. The way that people have reached out to me, it's people being like, Oh yeah, like you know, I don't, I don't have to subscribe to certain ideas, and um, and I can follow my intuitions, and uh, and I have been. It's it kind of opened up the floodgates for me in terms of talking super openly about all these other issues, and really, I don't know. I kind of lost a lot of um, a lot of inhibitions around being like, all right, let's just like real talk yeah. about what it's like to be a human in the world. And it really is, I mean, the way people respond to it is like, oh my God, we can do this, you know? And yeah. it's like, yeah, we can do yeah. this. Let's just all do it, you know? So. Well, we also get to be exposed to how articulate of a writer you are, I think. Oh, and that's something you. that really became clear with some of the notes that you sent to fans oh, specifically. You. I want to end first drag con. Who are you most excited from the drag race sphere to meet for the first time? Because I think we all assume y'all know each other. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I've had the opportunity to really work with a lot of the girls um, uh, on tour over the last few years, but um, God, I don't know. There's so many amazing ones. You know who I've, I've met in passing but never spent any time with is Sasha Velour, and I just admire her work so much. So I'd be super excited to meet her if you ever actually got to meet anybody at DragCon if you're another drag queen, but you don't. We're very busy. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we can't you. wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Mwah. Mwah.